Here's how to quickly connect up a DHT11 or DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor to an ESP8266 microcontroller. First of all, I'll recommend buying the DHT22 over the DHT11. They're said to be more accurate and also more robust. This cheap DHT11 I bought from AliExpress no longer works. Here's a chart that compares the two different types. A DHT22 is roughly twice the cost of a DHT11. Be sure to buy decent components that have good reviews. If you want more accurate data then go for the DHT22. However, it's slower at taking measurements. Now let's get the sensor connected to the ESP8266 and take some temperature and humidity readings. So here's how to wire up the ESP8266 to the DHT sensor. So on the DHT sensor, the voltage is often identified by a plus sign. So that needs to go to a 3.3 volt pin on the ESP8266. Ground is normally identified by a minus symbol. So that needs to be hooked up to the ground pin of the ESP8266. The data line is normally the middle pin of the DHT sensor. I highly recommend using GPIO14 for this. So this is from Random Nerd Tutorials and it shows the pin diagram of various different types of ESP8266. I think this one is the most common one and this is the one I use. So a very important thing here is the GPIO14 which I recommend you use is actually labelled D5. So don't think that this pin is pin 5, it's actually GPIO14 when we come to writing our sketch. So if you scroll down a bit, then there's a list here of best pins to use. Although you see that most of them are okay, I would highly recommend that you avoid any pins that have output during the boot process. So this can interfere with the sensor, so it's better not to use any of these. So by process of elimination, I think that GPIO14 is about the best one to use. So now we've set up our hardware, we need to write the Arduino sketch. So we need to fire up the Arduino IDE. And first of all, we need to go to Tools and then Manage Libraries. And you need to search for DHT. And there's quite a few, so I'll click to Installed. And the one you want is DHT Sensor Library by Adafruit. So if you haven't got this one installed, then click on the button to install it. Incidentally, if you are having problems with this library, and many people do have problems with this library, there's also this one, so I found that this one was quite good as well. Don't get me to say that name, but this is an alternative one, but we'll stick with this one. So once you've installed the library, you can go to File and then Examples. Under Examples from Custom Libraries, there is a DHT Sensor Library. So under DHT Sensor Library, click on DHT Tester. So this is a nice straightforward sketch that will allow us to test the sensor. So all you need to do really is to change the pin here. So it will change it to pin 14. If you're using a DHT11, then you'll need to uncomment that line and comment out the DHT22 line. I'm using a DHT22, so I need to use that line. So that's about all we need to do. Have a scroll down and list the code. So it just reads the temperature, humidity, in a loop. If you're using a DHT22, then you can only really make one reading every two seconds. So if you're using a DHT11, you could shorten this delay. So let's upload the sketch and see if it works. So I'll go to sketch and then upload. So when it says connecting, you might have to hold down the boot button on the ESP8266. So then you can release it when it's saying writing. Okay, now you can go to Tools and then Serial Monitor and change it to 9600 board. I have to close again. Right, try again. So Tools and then Serial Monitor. And here we have our temperature and humidity reading. So it says it's 26 and a half and the humidity is 51. So I'll put it next to the window. Maybe it will go up a bit. So I have a small thermometer and that says it's 24.3 and 49% humidity. So the humidity is not bad. The DHT22 is definitely overstating the temperature. So the DHT22 sensor is working really reliably, as you can see here. We're getting readings every two seconds. So I've had huge problems with these sensors and they don't seem to work very well if you're using the Wi-Fi networking capabilities of the ESP8266. 
I had the same problem if I'm using the ESP32. I've not yet solved it, but it's a real nuisance. So while they're good little sensors, they're quite difficult to actually use in Internet of Things devices. So if you're connecting to the Wi-Fi, then be aware that these sensors can be a real hassle to use. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.